All right, this is Sonic from Go AZ Motorcycles, uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. We're on stage four of taking apart a uh, KTM RFS engine. Um, and in this step, we're going to split the cases and uh, pull the transmission and crankshaft out. Um, KTMs on this motor, um, you have to measure the crankshaft end play, which is how much the crankshaft moves in the cases themselves once they're bolted together. So before I take it apart, I like to check the end play and see where I'm at. So when I go to reassemble the engine, I know where I need to be at or if I need to adjust anything from here. So um, I'm going to take a break real quick. I'm going to set up a measuring device um, and then I'll show you how to measure that real quick and then we'll get into splitting the cases. All right, so I have the, uh, the way I measure crankshaft end play now set up on the bench here. If you look, it's uh, just a dial caliper, magnet, and a base. And what I'm going to do is have make sure the engine's stable, and it is. Um, and then one thing you want to do is make sure the crank locking bolt is loose. If the crank locking bolt is tight, the crank won't move because the crank locking bolt is pushed up against it. So now I have it all set up. I'm just going to reach in, and the crank should move fairly easy in the cases. I'm just going to push it up and down. And this one is actually too tight. There is no actual clearance. So um, I'm going to make a note of that, and upon reassembly, I'm going to have to readjust everything inside to make sure that I get the proper actual clearance that I want. So that's how you do that. That's very important, especially on reassembly, that you have the proper clearance inside the engine. Um, that way the crank spins freely and you're not, robbed, you're not robbing yourself of horsepower or possibly causing damage from friction or stress. So that's how you do that. I'm going to go ahead and remove this now. And we'll move on to actually splitting the cases. So the next step, since I have the crank locking bolt unbolted already, I'm going to remove a couple components that are make the separating case easier. The two of them are going to be the oil drain screens and the oil drain bolt. I've already removed the filters. Here's your oil drain bolt from the back. There's one screen on the side and one screen on the bottom. So I'm going to remove all three of those and the oil filters, which I've done previously already. And that will make separating the cases, cases a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and remove those. Um, since I am doing a full disassembly, I'm not too worried about the dirtiness or anything like that. After I get it all apart and everything inspected, I'll clean everything thoroughly, inspect it again, and when I reassemble, everything will be spick and span. So I'm not too worried about that at this time. All right. Oops. All right, that one's staying in. Remove this one. Hopefully, it comes out easy. It does. And this is your crank screen. This is what uh, screens the oil before it goes into the uh, uh, crank area and the top end. And as you can see, there is a lot of debris stuck in here. Um, what I will do is I'll pull all that debris off and lay it on a towel and inspect it and try to find out what it is. So there's definitely something going on in this engine in particular. So that's something good to look for. Um, you can get the case separated without pulling this out, so I'm just going to leave it in. It's in there really, really tight, and I'll show you what that looks like when I get the cases separated. So now we'll move on to actually splitting the cases. Um, once again, crank lock bolt is out. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and remove the case bolt. One hidden bolt right here. I'm gonna take a good look at that. Don't forget that one. It's this bolt right here. So those are all the case bolts. We'll remove those and I can go ahead and separate the cases.
these cases should separate fairly easy. Um, probably because we're recording that they're uh, not going to separate real easy. So we'll give it a try. If not, I'll set up a separation tool and we'll set that up too and I'll show you how to do that. So let's see how, what kind of luck we get. And if you look, there's tabs built into the engine that if you want to pound and separate things, you can actually push on these tabs. There's two there, two here that you can use, and two more down here on the bottom. So that's what I'm going to beat on. I'm not just going to beat on any part of the engine. Um, you have a risk a chance of breaking something off or uh, damaging it in some way, warping it, who knows what you could possibly do. So if you are going to beat on an engine or whatever, first of all, use a dead blow. So it's not hard, it won't damage anything on impact. And then make sure you're pounding on a, on a, on a tab or a, a somewhere that's made or strength strong enough for you to beat on. So. Looks like we're going to be in luck. Alright, so there you have it. You want to push on your transmission shaft and your crank to make sure everything comes out. First thing you want to do immediately when you get your cases split is flip it over. Look for anything that might be stuck to the inside of the case. And as you can see on this, there's a washer stuck right there. Reference where it goes, in this case it's the, the main shaft, and it goes right there. So I said earlier that the, uh, the shift shaft washer was the first most lost washer. This is the second most lost washer. So make sure that goes where it needs to go. So here you have the split cases. Here's your oil screen that I was trying to get out earlier and couldn't. And you can see there's quite a bit of debris on this also. So we'll uh, have to look to see where all that comes from. So here you have your, obviously your crank, your counterbalancing assembly, your uh, main shaft, counter shaft, two shift shafts, and your shift drum. And then we're going to go ahead and remove these components now. Um, first and real easy to pull out is the counterbalancer. And then as you can see, exactly like it sounds, it counterbalances the weight from the crankshaft. Counterbalancer, crankshaft. Okay, that one doesn't want to come out right now. We'll do that last. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can pull your shift shafts out. I'll spin this around so you can see better. Pull your shift shafts out to the side. You can remove your shift drum. And these rollers go along with it. I'll show you where those rollers go in a minute. But this is your shift drum. This is what your shift star that we took off in an earlier segment bolts onto the top of and that's how your engine shifts through these grooves they move the shift forks up and down and allow you to choose what gear you want to be in so shift drum shift shaft this is a shift fork so this holds the transmission actually moves the gears 